morning to you. Thank you for your company this Monday morning. It's 7 o'clock in Sydney. Our top story this hour, an easing of restrictions starts this morning for fully vaccinated people under stay-at-home orders in New South Wales. Kenny Heatley joins us live from Sydney. Kenny, there are still many who will be missing out, though. That's right, people. 78% have had their first dose in New South Wales and 45.6% as of the numbers that were given at the press conference yesterday are fully vaccinated. So that's more than half of the eligible population. But the age group missing out the most is young people, 16 to 29 year olds. Only 20% of that age group roughly are fully vaccinated. So more older people enjoying picnics in the park, uh, presumably because they've had more access to the vaccines for longer. But the rules that are kicking in today uh, include five people, out, if you're outside of the local government area of concern, five people can meet up outdoors, not including children under 12, so long as everyone over the age of 16 is fully vaccinated, but you must stay in your local area. You must wear a mask at all times when you're outside, except when you're eating and drinking. If you're inside a local government area of concern, your household, as long as you're fully vaccinated, can enjoy up to two hours of picnics and recreation outside. Exercise will be unlimited, so long as everything is outside of those curfew hours. And if you live alone and you're fully vaccinated you can meet up with one other fully vaccinated friend uh, for up to two hours. Uh, Pete's not too many people here at the moment just some exercises but that may change this afternoon. And Kenny firefighters have been asked to drive ambulances if paramedics become overwhelmed with COVID patients. Well, there's currently 1,200 or so people in hospital at the moment with coronavirus, 220 people in ICU. And according to the New South Wales government modelling, when things are expected to be the worst, which is late October, uh, we could be needing 560 ICU beds and paramedics are pretty stretched at the moment as it is. Uh, now, under a worst case scenario, New South Wales Ambulance have requested uh, to Fire and Rescue New South Wales that 150 firefighters be on standby to drive ambulances and respond. Uh, to emergency situations if the paramedics become completely overrun uh, with critically ill COVID patients in the coming weeks. Now, the Daily Telegraph has received correspondence between Fire and Rescue New South Wales and the Fire Brigade's Employees Union, and a part of that letter reads, a trial by Fire and Rescue New South Wales staff who have basic life support qualifications, or BLS, and who are trained in CPR and defibrillation could support New South Wales Ambulance 1A responses to cardiac arrest events. A trial would support timely response to the the community in high demand periods. Now, the uh, Fire Brigade's employee Employees Union Acting Secretary Martin Dixon says uh, the firefighters are not fully trained to respond uh, to cardiac arrest emergencies. So it looks like this is not set in stone at the moment, Pete, but all contingencies looks like it's, it's been looked into at the moment. Kenny Heatley leading us off this morning. Thank you, Kenny. 